Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Schematics Fast Track Workshop. Uh, today, we're going to be focused on uh, MIST location based services, and uh, we are uh, excited and proud to have on today uh, Ron Armenta. Uh, Ron is the uh, sales director for MIST. Uh, he's based in Houston, and uh, uh, he's going to go into uh, well, here's the agenda as you see, you know, but Ron's going to, uh, I think he's the uh, main reason you guys are here today. I uh, just uh, would appreciate, uh, even though you all know, uh, I, 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 I believe you all know Securematics and who we are, but I just want to give you a quick intro uh, and, uh, you know, about about our company and, and, and the, uh, uh, the value we provide to the channel. Uh, we've got a, uh, you know, Securematics is a, is a uh, uh, high-touch, uh, value-added uh, distributor. We focus on uh, four you know, main partners, uh, Juniper being uh, one of the key ones uh, of that, and you know we've uh, we're proud to have been uh, awarded the Distributor of the Year for five five times, and uh, in 2020 for uh, Juniper, we our, our entire team knows and are experts on uh, Juniper. We know uh, uh, how to do a deal registration, uh, how to uh, work with them to expedite orders. Uh, uh, how to uh, provide <clears throat> uh, solution engineering and you know, building, uh, creating bombs, uh, and all the things that you see here. Uh, I think those are the things. Hopefully, you all know in, in working with us that we uh, uh, that you've experienced from us. Uh, we are uh, our team uh, consists of uh, uh, a number of folks who are uh, who have been with the company now for many uh, often uh, uh, for. Uh, uh, sorry, Bailey, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, so basically, you, you see that we are a, uh, a team that consists of, uh, uh, of folks like Armando Ortiz. He's our uh, head of operations. He's been with us for 10 years. Uh, Lauren Robinson, who uh, heads up finance and credit, been with us, I believe, for seven or eight years. Uh, Anand Hanna also been with us for our, our, a number of years and he heads up our solution engineering team. Uh, Jenny Cleary heads up our o o OM team. Bailey, who is uh, the one who's putting this uh, fast tracks and uh, a number of uh, cool marketing initiatives together. She's uh, uh, she's on the call and she heads up marketing. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, Mike Feder uh, Mike Federuccio, uh, Federuso who's our GM, also the GM of uh, Cloud Harmonics, in case you guys also work with uh, them for uh, Palo Alto or Okta or, or Infoblox. Uh, Mike is bringing a, uh, a great level of excitement, innovation, and, and uh, you know, he's truly really focused on uh, driving value to the channel. So uh, uh, this combined with uh, the sales team, and which is the next uh, slide, Bailey. Uh, the sales team is... Uh, you know, if you don't mind me using a baseball analogy, since there's nine uh, account reps, uh, it's it's a it's a great uh, team, a, a mix of uh, veterans and uh, uh, and and uh, skilled players who've been around for you know bring uh, four or five six years experience in distribution. Uh, with uh, Lisa Hansen, Lisa Kiss, we're in the Bay Area uh, handling many of our key partners. Uh, Kendall uh, Carson. Uh, Bryant and uh, Arnold, who are uh, based in uh, in the uh, Greenville Spartanburg area, uh, and all have a, a wealth of uh, experience in distribution. And uh, uh, and then in Southern California, we've got Lauren Ferry, Nancy Stratton, and Robin Mays. Again, so they they basically look after the entire country. I know that uh, on the call today, at least I believe we've got partners from uh, uh, Greater LA and or at least the West Coast, Upper Midwest. Uh, New England, uh, Boston, and uh, uh, Washington D.C., Baltimore, and Atlanta, and I think, and also maybe three three uh, partners that are in Texas. So uh, basically, this is the team that uh, you, you guys all work with, and I'm, I'm sure you all know, and uh, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it would say you love working with. So uh, uh, without further ado, uh, let me pass things over to Ron again. Ron Armenta from uh, Mist. And the goal of this call today just to uh, is to obviously build awareness, but also to uh, take it to the next step from there, and then try to uh, look into uh, opportunities and and, and uh, trying to look into discovery calls with some key end users and partners. So, uh, uh, Ron, take it over, please. Thanks. All right. 
Thank you. And thank you every, for everybody for joining. Um, hopefully we can see my slide, get a confirmation on that. Yeah, we can see them. Okay, great. Yeah, again, thank you everybody for joining. So um, as was stated here, we're gonna be jumping into the missed Juniper location story along with what we're doing around location analytics. Uh, so my uh, title here at Juniper is Partner Account Manager. I actually joined MIST four years ago, about four years ago, uh, originally at uh, sales in the upper Midwest and have made my way down to Texas because I don't really care for minus 20 degree temperature necessarily that much. Of course, today it's 80 and 99% humidity in Houston, but, but either way, um, prior to that too, did spend a lot of time here with another wireless company large networking concern and, and also dealt with some of this location stuff that has been really kind of constantly going on. So, you know, again, what the goal here is, is to kind of enlighten you in terms of what we have today at MIST, what those market opportunities are uh, to go to our customers towards and 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 see if we can, uh, you know, overturn some stones here and, and see a way to penetrate into them with, with this solution that we have around location. Kind of a rough agenda um, here, we'll look at the technology spectrum, uh, talk about the use cases we have, what are the technologies that we're talking about here with location? Because it's kind of a big umbrella at the end of the day. You know, we talk about artificial intelligence a lot these days. That can mean a whole lot of things, and certainly location can here as well. Um, and location oftentimes is not really done alone. Um, so just, you know, having one point technology product doesn't necessarily mean we're going to provide a solution. So there is a system associated with it. Then we'll jump into the analytics piece and do a demonstration of it, what we have in the live demo dashboard here uh, for MIST. So if we kind of look at location, you know, first and foremost, a little bit of a history lesson, it was 1999 that 802.11 started first shipping 802.11b products. Uh, actually, I should say 1998. 1999, Steve Jobs came up on stage and introduced the clamshell iBook. That made Wi-Fi a little bit more mainstream, but there was a lot of other things certainly going on here as well around location. Uh, a lot of these not necessarily standards based, right? So that was a problem first and foremost. Uh, we didn't have a killer app or apps really weren't available here at least until that 2007 timeframe when we saw the iDevice hit the market. So that brought on in the smart devices that came into play. Uh, calibration ease of use, ease of deployment to do location services was not very simple here either. Um, and then that usually meant an independent network that may or may not you know, have been in any way connected to the existing network infrastructure. So all things have changed here. Um, you know, what we have today, there is high standards uh, technology use case out there, not only with Wi-Fi, but with some other solutions around you know, ultra wideband with BLE that, that we're all now seeing, and a lot of those being very ubiquitous and available here to everybody. We all have apps. We've seen compelling apps that have come to the market here that do take advantage of location. You know, probably the one that's first and foremost, of course, in everybody's mind is, is the Google Maps, right? So we've been used to using those here for, for quite some time. So now how do we take that technology or that experience and bring it to the indoor play? Part of what's happening with that, too, is machine learning. So artificial intelligence have, have really hit the market hard. Of course, we see Juniper and Mist as being a key driver in that particular space. Based upon our architecture and what we have available for unlimited compute, unlimited storage, to take all this X, Y information um, and make it relevant here to somebody within an application or to a particular enterprise user. So, so again, all this kind of converging to, to be worked within this indoor location center. So this has been, you know, like I said, around the embracing of the different technologies from a standards perspective, Wi-Fi having been around for a while. You know, I think that we've really been chasing this blue dot experience since the early 2000s. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's it's been a lot of heavy lifting to get to where we needed to go to do some sort of Wi-Fi based experience with location. BLE now is enabled in every single handset that we have out there. So combining that now brings really what the solution that we talk about here at MIST to, to bear. Uh, but other technologies also are coming into play here too. Things like Wi-Fi radar, ultrasound, ultra wideband, you know, all these things now are standards based solutions. And if we also look at what we're doing here at Juniper and MIST from an API perspective, 
And what we're seeing the new technologies come out with here as well around APIs is there is an ecosystem partnership that can be made available based upon these open systems as well uh, to bring in a, a richer data set to provide us much more granular location detail. Ultimately, again, standards driving that cost down here, of course. If you didn't know, uh, Juniper Mist here has been in that magic quadrant for Gartner for their indoor location services since it originated. Um, so I think their first one came out a couple years ago. Um, and Mist Juniper, of course, now is positioned in this visionary category. We've actually extended our lead there uh, within that visionary space as well. Uh, now looking to raise that above that bar on the execution side of it. And you can see from a network player standpoint, as opposed to the point product folks, uh, we're the only one there that's a network technology company that's, that's, that's in that visionary category. And we'll look to raise that here in the next go around as they start com compiling that for this, this next generation of it. So let's talk about the use cases that we see around location. You know, it's, it's truly showing up in every vertical. Um, you know, probably, you know, starting on the right end there with healthcare, one that's been talked about the most is how do we take this patient caregiver, um, you know, the, the faculty staff in any one of these you know, educational institutions, uh, the enterprise space for actual people that work there as well as the visitors and make that location uh, information relevant to them. You know, within healthcare, it's been wireless first for a, a number of years. So there are a number of different technologies too that we can integrate into it, a number of different assets and devices that we can look to pull into it. Um, here, but at Mist and Juniper, we've always talked about it being user experience. So that user experience is on the Wi-Fi connection, simple network connection, but it's also been about user experience and making that network technology relevant beyond just simple connectivity. And that's what we're seeing here with these different locations across these different verticals. So retail being another obvious one that we have. Now that people are coming back here from their slumber in COVID, and, and by gosh, I hope they don't go back into another um, slumber here and have to hibernate for, for a few more weeks and months, but people are now coming back. So with that, when they're coming back, those shoppers, how do we make this, again, network that's in the store relevant to them to engage with them? Where are my shoppers? How can I get bigger wallet share while they're in my store? Uh, we also, when speaking about hospitality, just closed a, a very large hotel chain uh, that may or may not begin with them. Um, and looking at them, of course, that's a key thing when you're looking at property stays, but also even within their corporate campus from an enterprise perspective, is engaging with our visitors and associates, maybe around an app's perspective, but also from a contact tracing standpoint. You know, we want to know who's in the building, where they're actually congregating. If we do hear about somebody that, that has come down with COVID-19, that we can see where they've been, who they might have been in contact with. Do we need to remediate the entire building or shut down the entire building? Or can we just do that within a couple of rooms that they might have actually been? Also within the enterprise space there too, is all about space utilization. People are not necessarily going back to the office these days. Uh, when they do, it's probably trickling back in. Will it ever achieve this level of occupancy that we've had before? And understand that real estate's a very big expense for these companies. Um, I know one particular customer that spends $80 million on just real estate and offices alone. And if they can reduce that by 5%, by 10%, those are real numbers that can drive a technology play in there. You know, when they understand and looking at that utilization number from when, when it comes time to renew, those lease contracts on those buildings that we might be able to shrink it down a particular percentage, those are real savings that can come into play. So we always talk about, you know, the, what is that true better experience? Where is that killer use case that we can see come in? Um, so with retail, right, uh, the whole wayfinding for the large malls, how do we navigate through this from a large box store perspective, public venues as we work our way around these multi-use case, you know, retail, living, office space places. So when I navigate into those as I enter them. Large box stores, for example, are not just, you know, from the customer standpoint, but it could be about the associates as well. So if we can actually see the managers pull up a location scenario within their phones and say, okay, I see my five guys wearing those blue shirts all standing in the same spot. I wanna make sure that they're spread out across that store. 
I want to go over to that spot, disperse them to make sure that they're engaging here with customers. Also to say, if I see my customers existing heavily within the Sony area, not the Apple area or Samsung, this is now information that I can bring back to the vendors that are in my big box um, here and say, here's how people are engaging with you and your brand and why you're going to pay us a little bit additional money this year because we put you at the front of the store. We can now show that to you. Also, notification apps, wake up as I work into myself into a retail. You know, again, as they're starting to report back to say, I'm coming in, I haven't been in the grocery store, this particular grocery store for a while, to say, welcome back, Ron, you're in the loyalty app, you have it. Um, so here is a, a promotion to, to, to buy some of these particular Cheerios today. Um, or it also might be just, how do I work my way here across, you know, you have a shopping list that I've engaged with, this is the optimal way to work your way through to fill up your basket and get out of here in, in a quick manner. From an enterprise standpoint, you know, I talked about wayfinding for visitors. We have a customer in Chicago that has an app. They do have a wayfinding app for visitors that get to those conference rooms, that get to the restrooms, uh, but also for their associates, they have an app on their phone uh, that allows them to walk into a conference room and schedule it right there. Facilities can see how much of their different breakout rooms, their phone booths are being used by these associates so they can modify their workspace as they move ahead in the years to come to make sure it's optimally being used. Safety, unfortunately, is a concern oftentimes here for us. You know, if we have a notification that there is a safety consideration, not just within our building in particular, but maybe in a downtown scenario, a notification that can be that the trains are down, for example, if that's somehow a feed that we can bring into that app experience there here as well. Another customer that's talking about unauthorized use areas. So working within some classified uh, uh, departments and the government, where they can now have somebody carry around this device as their guest badge to say, now we see this person in here, in this particular area that's been zoned off. Let's make sure that security is notified and that they will uh, not be able to, or they'll be apprehended uh, or redirected a, a, to a different place where they have um, authorization to move to. Education, you know, it's certainly having to had wireless connectivity education here since the early 2000s, but how do we take that detail here and provide it to you know, those students and, and visitors for a wayfinding application? Those wayfinding applications probably become a little less relevant as somebody you know, gets a couple months into it, but it does provide the school with additional detail about how that campus is being used, how the buildings are being used, so that they can maybe re-swizzle that going forward, put in a new concrete path even, or actually say this particular large lecture hall needs to be reutilized here because we see the number of students from this college in that area at the same time. We've even had one school want a special engagement here for the student uh, athletes that were being recruited, doing things like push notifications for where they are, giving some detailed history about what they're standing in front of, um, and then try to make that recruiting experience even more um, enlightening or more engaging uh, to bring that kid onto campus. And then healthcare, right? So wayfinding, that's probably the original blue dot experience here for us. I walk onto, onto campus from the parking lot, but let's take that one step further and say not just that blue, bot, blue dot, but an engagement where it knows who I am based upon my app and me revisiting that particular healthcare location to say, Ron, you have a, an appointment at two o'clock here in radiology. Here is how you're going to get there. We've automatically checked you in, right? The current wait time for that is going to be 15 minutes. Also, you know, utilization of the different assets that exist within healthcare is a big challenge. Uh, they overbuy equipment historically uh, by about 30% because it just simply can't be, be found. Very mobile environment, um, a lot of expensive equipment out there that, that gets lost, that gets hoarded by the nurses, um, that's just not working, so it's providing no value to the hospital. Now, how do I uh, put that location information out there? How do I location enable these devices that allow me to be much more efficient with my assets? So when we look at MIST and what we're doing around location with both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy, um, you know, it's, it's actually now a convergence of what we have here with both Wi-Fi as well as BLE. And if you didn't know already, MIST has a Bluetooth uh, low energy antenna array that exists on top of every one of our APs or I should say most of them, because we do have one that doesn't have this in there right now. 
And we do have a standalone unit that's just simply that 16 element Bluetooth antenna array that you can deploy within an existing Wi-Fi environment, regardless if it's Juniper or if it's one of the other vendors that exist in that Wi-Fi space. But this allows us to bathe an area here with Bluetooth low energy. Very unique and different than what else exists in the market, those being typically Bluetooth uh, uh, pucks, if you will, that are battery based. Uh, they don't necessarily exist on that same network. Uh, so this allows us to manage not only this experience here from a network enabled device, but do some very unique things in how we deliver this Bluetooth energy over this particular space that we need to cover. So we're able to direct eight different beams of Bluetooth in eight different directions, allowing us then to deploy multiple of these devices, then using artificial intelligence and machine learning is to remove some of the heavy lifting that existed here before to calibrate a location experience. So this kind of calibrates itself, if you will, through artificial intelligence and machine learning. The more devices that come into my retail space, the more devices that come onto my campus, those different devices, new devices, as new eye devices are released, it's going to learn more about how those um, devices behave. It's gonna learn more about how those devices behave in the hand of those individuals. Obviously, we don't walk around with our iPhone in a grocery store above our heads. We're looking at it, right? We're moving around with it. So our artificial intelligence and machine learning um, does that here for us. So the more experience that we have, unlimited compute and data storage that we have on our system, it gets better and better with time. We actually work this Bluetooth here too from two different angles. So that being one from an asset visibility and tag standpoint, and also from an app engagement perspective. So the asset visibility allows us to take these very low cost battery based Bluetooth tags and put them on high asset value devices or people. Right, so if we have some medical equipment that's worth $50,000 and have, I've heard, walk out the door, and actually even the TVs that they say are in the guest rooms have a tendency to walk out the door here as well in the hospitals. Or if we have a spectrometer, right, that exists in a university, some of the other high asset value devices, for example, students, faculty, staff now that we're talking about enabling here from a location standpoint, providing them a unique battery-based BLE tag so we know exactly who that is and we're able to track them throughout our facility. Um, that's one possibility that we have, again, asset visibility and BLE tags. And then mobile engagement is where we actually write to a missed mobile SDK. So if you have an app today, that can be enabled very quickly to take advantage of this missed mobile experience. And this allows us to do a number of things with that, you know, like that notification, push notification, and of course, any kind of blue dot experience that we would have uh, available in that particular Bluetooth setting. So as I mentioned, location is kind of a big umbrella, right? It's, it's a lot of things. It can be different things to different people. But breaking it down a little bit from you know, the different scenarios that we can deploy here at Juniper Mist. First of all, Wi-Fi. You know, everybody has Wi-Fi. Depending on what you have from an AP density, we can show location detail today, right? And the accuracy around that's going to be somewhere in that five to 10 meter scenario. I've heard based upon AP density today in some environments, like within healthcare and the university K through 12 space, that it could be a little bit tighter than that but it's still not down to that one meter or you know, actual foot that some people talk about, the aisle level accuracy that's associated with that, that that we need or some expect. The next level is where we're actually enabling people with a Bluetooth tag. So this particular thing that we see on the screen right now is, is a tag that looks like an employee badge, right? So we have now to report back to our offices at Juniper, we have completely enabled this for contact tracing um, and we now have a badge that's BLE based, right? So this gives us now the ability to take that location accuracy a step further, but also allow us to identify an individual specifically, right? Because me carrying around my phone and some of the different devices I would have doesn't mean that I have it in my hand. It doesn't mean necessarily, right, that, that, that I brought it in at that point, but I typically do, for example but this is now something that I could tag to somebody and specifically say, this is who I am and where I am, and here is that accuracy level that I have associated with it. The next thing that we have is the mobile app, and this is where we write to that SDK. At this point, that app is always up and running. 
it's going to provide us now a better level of accuracy. In this case, that one to three meters. It does enable also this bi-directional communication where I can do things like the push notifications to say, hey, we do have you know, this special going on here if you buy today while you're in store. So a number of different capabilities that we're going to have available to you to us, as well as do this higher level of accuracy that we expect really from a from a location standpoint for indoors. Kind of that experience, if you will, for uh, that we have today with our uh, Google Maps on our phones as we drive from one location to another. So for us, we have this five sources of info for location. It's that Bluetooth mobile app based location the tag we also see passive ble devices out there you know so a number of devices today certainly are going to be passively enabled uh anywhere from you know our smart devices to some of the speakers you know just a number of things today that are going to be associated with a passive ble and then we also of course see the connected wi-fi users as well as those that are probing and unconnected users and we'll look at this here in the dashboard on what those things look like bottom line is nobody kind of brings these two things together in one particular network device and one particular view through that dashboard. What we see here by the different sources, you know, we do have, based upon our architecture today, a near real-time view into the system. So we're working on this modern cloud-based approach. It does work on the Kafka messaging bus, which is near real-time, this giving us that live view of what's happening in my environment. We can break down these clients by zone. So very granular detail in terms of how we can say, you know, that five to 10 meters, but if we tighten it up and square off zones within our facility or within a manufacturing area or with a hospitality venue, where are my people hanging out? Where can I take this now from a data analytics standpoint and make it meaningful to me? Within the COVID-19 world, you know, congestion notification certainly would be of consideration. Where are my hot zones? Do I want to break them up? But also, how does that work here within an airport, for example? If I have a hot zone in a particular spot, to me, from you know somebody that's trying to sell perhaps um, you know vodka while people are waiting for the flight, now I can take this congestion information, bring it back to Stoli's, and say, we got a banner available for you here. Here's how many eyeballs are seeing it, and this is what we would expect from a revenue standpoint going forward around it. Prox tracing and journey mapping, of course, are big things. Those are going to come from this app, app base uh, ability uh, true, down to that level. So seeing where we've been, what their junior mapping has been, who they've been next to while they're in those zones. And to get this, we talked about the hardware. We have the APs for Wi-Fi. We have the Bluetooth antenna array that sits on top of the APs. We'll say rides for free on that platform or we can have it independently. But to take advantage of this, of course, we need those subscription services on top too. So Wi-Fi assurance is what we have for starter on the Wi-Fi end of it. The other elements here, asset tracking and user engagement, those are specific to BLE, right? And we can choose both or one of those depending on what we're wanting to achieve here for uh, our BLE solution. Uh, most times we're going to see folks now select all of the above because we've packaged them up into one subscription that we call AI, right? It's sub AI. It's going to give a buy five, get two free scenario. That also gives you this premium analytics. So this allows us to take that XY information, save it for 90 days to do our analytics with, and then incorporate some specific reporting around that to show what we have around this user journey and proximity-based tracing. Touching on some of the partners that we have, you know, as I mentioned, um, oftentimes it's going to take a number of different solutions. If we wanted to tag students in this particular private school in New Orleans, right, we would go to a partner like Contact.io to put that the, um, the specific badge on them, just like we do here at Juniper when we're going back for, for our, our office reopenings. Uh, also working with some of those guys to put them on solutions here, you know, for workflows, raw materials to end and product, you know, how is that working its way through my manufacturing facility? Also folks like Connexient, you know, some of these folks too, I probably should say, you know, a little bit of updating where it's been acquired, so it might not be under the same name, but somebody like Connexient that had a very specific relationship in healthcare to develop those applications that were very unique, take advantage, of, take advantage of the MIST SDK, but also bringing in the mapping component here within, within that particular hospital. And then BI applications like Refinity, 
This is a, a partner then that took this work station information, mapping in some different login detail, perhaps looking at Wi-Fi logins when I'm in a particular enterprise account or in my, my, my work environment for a large customer and say, this is how this facility is being consumed, right? And reporting back about how we might wanna change how that's being consumed, redu reduce that workspace, but taking in, ingesting that information that we deliver out here from this mislocation opportunity. Oh, let me let me step back here. I do want to mention one other uh, app partner and one that's distributed here uh, by the folks at Securematic. Uh, so one that we work with here in in Texas called Cloud Ingenuity has done some very innovative things around location and mapping. In this case, leveraging what we're doing around API specifically. So it doesn't even use our SDK, but just does API calls because our system is API first. So pulling in what they need from that XY perspective and putting it into their own on the fly maps that they're able to deliver very quickly with minimal modification to somebody like the university. One of the challenges has been app maintenance, right? So we know from an Apple iPhone standpoint that we'll have our applications updated with new mapping detail. You know, obviously from a Google Maps standpoint, information's always fed in there to update things like work zones and, and accidents and those things. So what those folks at Cloud Ingenuity are doing and are now distributed at Securematics takes this and makes that particular care about um, a little less significant for them because these maps are now done on the fly. So part of the messaging here too is just what tremendous innovation is occurring within this particular indoor location um, system. So the thing is, you know, we talk about user experience, making location relative to, you know, what's happening into that user experience. There's a lot of data that's being generated Right, so the bottom line is there's always data out there. What do we do with it? How do we make it meaningful? How do we collate it, correlate it, and present it back to somebody that, that we have now actionable items to work with or information, business intelligence that, that we can work with going forward. So things like location-based analytics. If we look at this you know, here from a, a, a multi-use venue, we do have a number of those that are deployed around the country here in DC and Dallas um, and Florida that are saying, I have this big venue, we have Wi-Fi. Where are people hanging out? Is it new people or is it assets? One of these actually was even tagging Wi-Fi-based trash bins that can sense when they're full. So they can now notify somebody that says, this needs to be taken care of by maintenance and facilities, right? But where actually is that asset? So I can go more quickly than take care of this particular issue. But now taking this information and saying, okay, here's who going through my, my facility. Here's where most people are hanging out. What does that mean to now the, the, the potential tenants? So even one of these particular customers has a big monitor screen behind the front desk. So the property manager, when you walk in, you're getting a map of their entire facility, which spans several acres, but it's gonna show who is there from a user, an associate, a customer, right, a vendor, whatever it would be that they have locked down from a particular label. Um, and, and so you can have, right now we're very busy. This is where most people are hanging out. They're hanging out there because of this. Here's the different bays that we have open and where we're gonna steer you today to, to look at being a particular tenant of ours. So heat maps, you know, what do we have there from a congestion notification? We'll look at this stuff here too, but I just wanted to run through a couple quick signs. Uh, motion paths, you know, how do people get from the front door to radiology? Should we change that? We know that oftentimes, you know, we look at this, especially within retail, we see those stores changing how they're put together based upon hopefully some, some intelligence they have about how that facility is being consumed. Interesting thing too about another, you know, retail customer, we have information on their paths, but what they're doing in their models is not just changing the store footprint, what departments might be first or second, obviously based upon, you know, what, what are the popular departments, but Think of a red phone that used to be in some of these stores. A red phone might indicate which customer we're talking about, but those red phones are not used anymore at all. So why put these things in? Why have that expense? But how did that engagement change, right? So that engagement changed based upon the app that, we're, that, that the, the customer's using, but also their associates would be using. So instead of a red phone now, this person can say, I can't find something, right? I need to call an associate. Now what we've engaged here is a potential Uber effect. So now the associate gets that, 
they can go find that person based upon that kind of Uber experience that we can deliver that phone so that they can make sure that that person's taken care of now. So kind of changing that engagement scenario. And then breaking this down from a hotspot and contact tracing scenario, right? Who have I seen? Who has this particular person been by at you know the beginning of the day at this particular time set? Who were they exposed to? Did I make my way through that entire facility? So just note here from a, a Juniper perspective, we're really getting you know this analyst recognition across the entire stack, Wi-Fi, location. Uh, WAN-based, wireless, LAN, all of these things kind of coming together for us, which we think is an integral part when delivering these different location-based services, because all this thing comes into play at the end of the day about that user experience. So that kind of wraps up what I was doing from a slide standpoint. I was gonna jump over to the uh, dashboard presentation. Is there any questions that I might be able to answer? It's kind of some come in through the chat. I don't know if microphones were open on this. Hey, hey Ron. Uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead Bailey. I was just going to say there were no questions yet, but if anybody has questions, you can submit them to the chat or the question box. Ron, I just have a question, if you don't mind. I, I just, uh, I'm just curious. Uh, it, it, it seems, I mean, you know, to me, this is, uh, uh, this is exciting. I love this, uh, but I, I also just know that this is going to take uh, our partners, you know, the, the end user engagement will not just be with IT, but it will be with operations, marketing, uh, probably even uh, maybe data, uh, the data team, you know, uh, at, at some of these organizations. I'm just wondering um, how is that, you know, and I, I know that's an opportunity, but it also means it, it, it is a more cross-organizational cell. W would you not agree? Uh, you know, that's that's a perfect, a perfect lead in to you know a discussion about how that comes into play and, and thanks for bringing that up yeah. so in, in my in my previous life and i've seen to now take that into my existing life here at mist and juniper you know and start asking those questions but um a number of years ago when i was talking to it and talking about location stuff uh i had a number and this has played out for 15 20 years within healthcare um, that somebody would go to the HIMSS conference, they'd come back with a new medical device, uh, the radiology department would, and they'd say to the IT guys, make this work. And they'd have no idea, you know, where the goes into and goes out to was, right? <laughs> Is it even IP enabled? You know, does it have Wi-Fi in it? Uh, but, you know, five or maybe even a little bit longer before that, I'd be talking to IT departments, and I'd say, are you guys doing anything around location engagement? Are you guys developing an app? And, and, you know, most of the times these guys said no. And I said, I'll, I'll put 20 bucks on the table right now that says that you, they are. Somebody is. It's just not IT. Um, and there are other times that I talked to, you know, the IT department. They said no. And then a month later called me up and said, we have an app that's going to roll out. I need to make sure it works. And it was driven by the CMO, the CEO, and working with somebody like Connexient. But the IT staff didn't even know, right? right. The good the good IT guys, right, um, maybe that want to get ahead of the curve will, you know, take a little bit of a different approach. So like a big retailer with the red phones said, you know, hey, this stuff's cool. We're going to standardize on mist. But while you're here, we're going to wheel you over to the marketing department. We're going to wheel you over to security, right, department because of all that information that you gather. And there's actually even a story around that security and location that come into play, too. Um, around you know this retailer because their store was looted in some of the rioting that happened that just so happened to be a missed store. So it became a physical security play from, from that standpoint in terms of the information that we were gathering. But in that case, these guys were kind of a little bit of ahead of it. And I've had healthcare that's done that too, that said, hey, this stuff's great. I want you to come back in two weeks, but I'm gonna bring in the CNO, I'm gonna bring in to the, the biomedical department, I'm gonna bring in all the department heads because this is, you know, Everything rides on this network. So they need to understand how they can bring the new solutions, how we can deliver new capabilities based upon that user experience. Right. So hopefully that answered that question, but thanks for teeing that up. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Different stakeholders are certainly gonna be involved. So here I am in the MIST dashboard, right? This is Cupertino um, that we have where I guess nobody is supposed to be these days. 
Um, it has seemed like there's been a few more people reporting. We do have a strategy at Juniper that does involve BLE to bring people back into that office. So we can see right now that there's 18 clients in there, right? And some of that's going to be just, you know, what, what might be still lingering around there that we have set up as demo stuff here too. I'll find some data to look at, of course, but these are the associated clients. And we talk about, you know, location impacts a lot of stuff. And we always start off with the ever-present heat map, right? Of course, this gives us some location information. In this case, it's about what we're doing from a Wi-Fi coverage standpoint. But within our platform here, we do have this ability to show live view what's happening in this particular office. Um, and this will depend in part what licenses that we have subscribed to. I talked about Wi-Fi connected and unconnected, right? So from a simple dashboard standpoint, I would be able to see that information. And then I also have, in this case, turned on, you know, the different elements of engage and asset visibility here as well. But what I can see here within this map is obviously some dots. You know, the, the green ones here, those are actually APs. And I can see which devices, how many devices I should say are connected to it. Uh, I can also see some movement going on here, right? So we can actually see things moving around. And we've actually enabled some different like iRobot things with a mobile app on a device we can, that we can track them. So here we can see John Doe. Uh, we can see Jane Doe. We have another one here called Curious George. Um, so this is going to show us some of that location detail as people, or in this case, maybe a robot will move around our office. We also have this ability to do things like validate a path. So when we wanted to go through um, and actually um, add to a particular path, one retailer that we worked with that wanted actual aisle level accuracy, which is effectively one meter, right? So in this case, it will take a little bit more um, calibration outside of what we do from an AI standpoint, but this allows us to kind of do those snap to path things that occur today already within a Google Maps scenario where it knows that I'm on that road. It's really snapping the path because it doesn't have that level of accuracy either. So the wayfinding paths here, path validation, uh, but something else that we talk about here are the beacons and zones. So this gets into a couple things about where we can be very granular in terms of how I consume my facility, how I map what departments I'm going through, right? So here we can see different, different um, um, beacons in this case. But also I'll talk about the beacon part here first. So the beacons within MIST is not these battery-based hockey pucks that we have, but because we bathe this area with Bluetooth low energy, right, we can now have this virtual beacon concept, which is really setting up a mini zone. So if I wanna grab one of these right here, we can see this one is, it's, this is a hazardous area. And if I wanted to edit it, right, so it says this is a hazardous area, um, and you're gonna get a message back to your phone saying this is a hazardous area, leave now, right? So it can pop up and say, you need to get out of here because you know, it's a hazmat thing. Maybe it's, you know, you don't have authorization to be there. We can also do that here too. And when I talk about it being a particular zone, right, here's where I would take that transmit power and dial it up or down to make it a tighter zone. So maybe, you know, I have a larger work area that I don't, I don't necessarily need to have it very accurate. In this case, we just want to be within three meters. So I can dial up this to give me that, that transmit power that will shrink that down to the zone that I want it to. So this is that concept of, of mobile engagement, right? I have an app on my phone then allowing to tell me that this is a hazardous area and I need to leave. So that's the virtual beacon um, uh, ability that we have here for us as well. And then we also have the zones. So these are different location zones that we have. So things like engineering and leadership, which is right here, we can see it's a little bit fainted in terms of how I look at that. Here's QSA quality assurance, right, um, is what we have is over here. So that ability to, to get very tight, we can actually see how we move through the facility. But obviously this can come into play here from a journey mapping and prox tracing perspective to know what is actually happening here within my environment. And that prox tracing thing can incorporate multiple APs. So here what we're seeing is the, the, the quality assurance guys actually are are going to take two APs because this is our AP density that we have. We need to pull these two together to give us this prox tracing zone out there, that being different than the location zone that we have.
We also have this ability to look at location diagnostics as well as an RF replay. So we call it RF glasses. We can go in and look and see what the experience is for a particular device as somebody walks through an area, walks through a building. This helps us get more refined in terms of what that experience is gonna look like and make sure the system is working down to the level we want to. We have this thing now called occupancy analytics. So we've defined, again, this is taking my zones to say, I want to have quality assurance be at a certain number of people, but right now I am exceeding that. I am over capacity, right? My other departments here are largely good. I'm teetering on the end here with engineering and leadership and marketing. You know, it's kind of in that, that yellow zone or I have an orange zone here for DevOps where, where you know, it's, it's getting a little bit tight. Um, here we can also see this too from, from a client density, right? Uh, and the cool thing about this is we have a customer, let me go over here to site configuration. So a customer that we had that rolled out very quickly a safe campus. So they went from zero to $15, $15, 15 million dollar purchase order to refresh their existing Wi-Fi network infrastructure to MIST because of what we provided around location, not just from a Wi-Fi, but also from a BLE perspective. So they wanted to have not just an insurance policy for students to report back to school last year, they wanted it to be a safe environment. And one of the things that they did here is to say, okay, let's take this and pull it together around occupancy and location uh, to have this thing of a QR code, right? So they can put this QR code on the building. So when a student walks into physics or walks into the union or to the union, they can take their phone out, put it up to that particular QR code and see for themselves that screen I was just looking at. If anybody has their phone handy, this would indeed work. But this allows them to do their own self-policing. So if I say, I'm gonna go grab a sandwich or something in the student union, I take that, it's, it's a little bit full. You know, it's, it's them taking their own personal responsibility or, or their own personal preference to say, you know, I'd rather not go in there based upon these particular occupancy levels that I'm seeing right now. So this being something that wasn't necessarily driven first with this particular customer, it's MIT, by the way, that was doing this. Those guys, I guess, probably know a little bit about technology, but it was really done first within a retailer or a shopping center. These are the guys that did this QR code concept based upon location within there that allows them to do some unique engagement things too. Any questions? I'll pause again real quick. Not yet, Ron. So something else that we have over here too is, is um, analytics. So analytics has taken some of this detail that we have, right? And saying not only from a network consumption standpoint, but things like occupancy and locations as well. So here we have an analytics report that we're pulling up from, you know, what we have today within the system and those specific licenses around Wi-Fi and BLE. So here we can see some of that stuff I was looking at in that PowerPoint things like client dwell time, so client wait time and how that's trending. Here's client overall numbers that we're seeing trend. You know, is that going up based upon time of day? What happens on Tuesday versus Thursday? What happens if I run a promotion at the Mall of America, let's say for example? Uh, do I have the number of people that have responded to that that I expected? You know, what other things bring in a larger number of people based upon that? active clients in the last number of days, you know, so this being by those different sites, what applications are they consuming? So, you know, this is combining some of that location, user stuff, as well as, you know, what's happening from an overall network performance. And this actually being a tool then that I can go ahead and come into and create my own particular reports, my own care abouts uh, on different things like assets, applications, visits, wait times that, that we've seen here this, thus far. And then one other thing that we have, and I, I teed this up here just because the system was a little bit slow, but let me go ahead and log in here, see if I can have this come up. This is the premium analytics piece, right? So here is now where I can take that one step further. I have additional reporting available to me. I have more storage of all this unlimited compute and, um, uh, or unlimited storage that, that's in Amazon's cloud. And by the way, Customers like, you know, we've talked about those retailers, they say, what happens if I want to look at what happened a year ago? So we can say, this is all, you know, API based. You can dump all of that into your own S3 bucket. If you wanted to see trending across the last holiday season or what was going on pre-COVID now that we've kind of unleashed the hounds, how does that compare 
you know, what was going on the weeks before COVID and now that, that everything's opened up, hopefully, and fingers crossed that it stays that way. But this is the premium analytics that gives me these different contact tracing and reporting things already teed up and gives me that flexibility to come in here and do some more of the same based upon this information being available to us. So now we can see this prox tracing, what has been visited the most, you know, where have people been hanging out, um, all 30 areas have been visited. We're actually seeing contacts in proximity of 71. Here are dwell times across that, all based in 15 minute chunks uh, to know which particular spots are being uh, most visited. Also now we can get into the prox tracing piece. So Nancy here has actually had a lot of, no, the missed, 13S Mini has had a number of engagements. So hopefully this, whatever this device here hasn't been talking or touching a lot of people because, you know, then they come back with a positive diagnosis that might be a little bit of trouble for us. Um, and then here's where we look at things like prox tracing by area. So the break room, who was in there? We had two devices, it was Denali and uh, somebody else. We've had a little bit more and obviously we saw that already with the CSQA. Here are those people that have been in, in that area. So if we have somebody else that came in, you know, that that um, that it was tested positive, now we can track it back to those individuals that they were touched to. And then lastly, what am I looking at from a compliance and utilization by area? So here we can see what our occupancy thresholds were set at. Red light, you know, green light, uh, yellow, orange light, you know, where's my hotspots? Where do I need to get this addressed if I need to based upon some particular instance? Or in this case, you know, is it information not from a COVID-19 standpoint, but something that's going to be interesting to me from a retail perspective? So I, we're coming up, I think, on the window here, too, for Q&A or getting close to the top of the hour. So in respect of time, I'll go ahead and stop here. And if I can answer some questions about missed and what we're doing on location, location analytics, where we see that opportunity, anything kind of open it up. Hey, Ron, I'll just jump in. Again, this is Mitch. Uh, if any of the partners out there have, uh, you know, an end user that they'd like to, uh, you know, uh, they, they see an opportunity out there, you know, what, what do you, uh, you know, should they, engage with their local mist rep, uh, you know, what's the next path for them to, uh, uh, to, to uh, take it to the next level? You know, if there is an opportunity out there from, from our standpoint is you can reach out to the teams, you know, myself and I can direct to the different teams, but you know, hey, I have an opportunity with, you know, um, a, a large sports venue within my town. And, and I think this looks interesting. They do have an app. So I can talk to them about enabling that for location. You know, how does that impact their concessions? Who are the major sponsors for that? Um, who are the sports teams that that actually frequent that? Can they be part of this discussion? But you know, engaging us from that standpoint, then to say, you know, we'll bring in a team and the experts and and work with you guys to to deliver that message to your prospects. And and I guess I, I would also just add if, if that uh, our team uh, Anon and his team. Uh, our, and our sales team, for that matter, you know, are, are, are uh, uh, I think, you know, have the ability to certainly uh, uh, do a, disco a discovery call. Uh, Anon's team has put together, actually, in our own office, uh, uh, missed access points and with contact IO uh, beacons, and uh, you know, and we've been able to uh, do some you know, contact tracing in our own office. So. We we can uh, we can certainly show you a even a live demo of that if that would be uh, of interest to anybody uh, to any of the partners out there. Anand, do you want to talk about that? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mitch. Uh, yeah, um, absolutely correct. We have deployed as a proof of concept the uh, uh, missed application and the proximity tracing on uh, in our office uh, just as a plan to get back to work from from the office uh, and um, we got, to be honest, um, an, uh, an uh, excellent results uh, uh, up to the, the accuracy were up to meters, uh, which is uh, something really good. Uh, so we would be more than happy to show that live if you wanna show it to your end users or uh, bring your team. Uh, we are also able to uh, maybe show it uh, on a, on a phone call or uh, make a, a presentation about it. Perfect, that sounds great. 
Uh, any any questions out there, Bailey? Uh, any of the uh, partners have? No, we haven't had any questions come through. Uh, well, Ron, thank you. That was that was excellent. It was really, um, you know, I, I uh, uh, on a personal note, I've been involved in retail and hospitality and doing location-based services and uh, things and, and being able to tracking audiences and path to purchase. So this is uh, to me just uh, this is great stuff. I, I really uh, I, I love this. So. Um, uh, for the folks the out there, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Ron. For the folks out there, we will say, we will share with you the, a, a recording, uh, the, the link to a recording for this webinar. Uh, we were sent out a survey. Uh, hopefully, you received you you got out of the uh, you got out of this what you were hoping for, and uh, we'll we'll share the uh, the deck as well. Uh, and uh, you know, certainly we uh, we thank you very much very much for attending. We will have future. Fast tracks uh, that we will send your way uh, as we uh, as we you know into uh, into August and September. So look for uh, the calendar of events, which we'll share with everyone. Uh, but thank you very very much, everyone, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, guys.